everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to begin our service by singing. I'd like to see you all scrambling for your seats. This is fun. <laughs> I can't tell what you're doing at home, but here it's a lot of fun. So consider coming here. Anyhow, so we're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, One with the One. Zoom for months, so I'm not sure what this room looks like. <laughs> um, welcome to everybody on Facebook. Well, <laughs> sorry. Welcome to everybody on Facebook. How are my Yoda ears here? I've got to stick them under the hat. Um, welcome to everybody on Facebook and Zoom, which is where I usually am. And welcome to everyone in the sanctuary. If you're in the sanctuary and you have a telephone, please silence it so it doesn't go off. Ah, so we're going to pray. Let's come together once again, recognizing that there is one power, one presence, one energy that creates the infinite universe. It creates each and every one of us. It is that presence in our heart of heart that I call God. Right here, right now, is God. We give thanks for that presence. We know that it is the essence of each and every one of us as we travel through life in this vehicle called a body. But we are first spirit. And from that place, we bless this service. We bless our music. We bless our minister and his inspiring talk. We bless Children's Church. We bless everyone who serves today. We bless it all as God's blessing on us and the rest of the planet. We give thanks to be here today. We give thanks for the blessings of life, of health, of wholeness, and for the opportunity to be together. And so with a full and grateful heart, we release this prayer into the infinite mind and trust and know that when it is so in the mind of God, it must be so everywhere. And so we let it be, and together we say, Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still, be still. 
prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Everybody, please remain standing as we sing together our congregational song, Surely the Presence. And this is our time for meditation. So for the next five minutes, we're going to have a silent meditation. And we ask that you repeat to yourself silently, God is the love that I am. And in five minutes, we'll bring you out.
Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Welcome. I'm thrilled to have you here. Whether you're here in person, on Zoom, or on Facebook, we are happy that you are part of our community. I'm going to talk today a little bit about uh, power, and I want to share a quote that I read in Science of Mind earlier this week, and this is what inspired me. Through, Ernest Holmes says this, he says, through spiritual discernment, we see that we have within us a power which is greater than anything we shall ever contact, a power that can overcome every obstacle. If God be for us, who can be against us? Wow, I love that. So the power that we're talking about is within us. It's God, it's spirit, it's love, it's intelligence, it's mind. And it is born out of an awareness of our oneness with God. So get this, hear this this morning, that when we know our oneness with God, our power increases, right? So why, why is this important? I think so that we realize we have the ability to expand our life. Our life could include more, more people, more love, more joy, more creative opportunities. There are lots of ways to glorify God, and I think one of them is for our life to be big and work in a wonderful, fulfilling way. I think that that glorifies God. See, because spirit, we say spirit that's everywhere and within us, is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. So spirit expands and experiences more in the world by means of us, by us having a bigger life, by us saying yes. Do you notice how over time, uh, many of us start to exclude things and people from our lives. And I've thought about this, and I thought, gee, does this really make my life smaller? The answer is yes, absolutely, by saying, no, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't associate with the, you know, on and on and on. And I think our life is supposed to enlarge all the time. I think that life is supposed to get better for us every year. Every year we're supposed to say, I don't know how it happened, but this year my life is so much better than last year. I am just so grateful. See, it's amazing that each of us can act intelligently in a universe that is a universe of intelligence, right? So if we, if unintelligence is functioning in our consciousness, it's going to produce the wrong effect, the wrong condition in our life. You know, as a result of this, you know, uh, people limit themselves. They have stress. They experience lack. They start quarreling. They experience more sickness. To me, all of this, I believe, is unnecessary. When our mind is healthy, when we are filled with healthy thinking, when we know we are a place where spirit resides and expresses like no place else, we don't make unhealthy decisions. Humanly, we may think of ourselves as limited. You know, I mean, I suppose probably for all of us at some point, we've seen ourselves through some lens of limitation. But the universe that we live in is not limited. And where is the universe? The universe is everywhere, but it's also, and most importantly, it's in here. You were created by the infinite intelligence of the universe, and therefore, you have to be intelligent. Right? People love to tell themselves and say things like, oh my god, I'm so stupid, I did the stupidest thing, I can't believe what a dumb thing I did. No good comes from that, okay? So one, don't do it, and two, it's just not spiritual truth, okay? When a baby is born, right, we all just quail over this baby. You know how cute this baby is? Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Look at the little fingers, little toes. Looks like his mom. She looks like her dad. On and on and on. But what we don't say, what we don't say is this baby is a pure, perfect expression of the infinite. And we don't say that every time we think about that baby, that person, for the rest of their life. But imagine if we did. Imagine if every time we thought about someone, all we said were those God thoughts those spiritual truths that we know lift people up, we know they help heal people, they contribute to people feeling better about themselves, they help make the world a more peaceful place. This baby is a pure, perfect expression of the infinite. And I look at you and I say the same thing. This baby is an expression of the pure, perfect infinite. Right? So as we grow, it seems like everybody at some point experiences some trouble, you know? Uh, and, and, and it seems to me that the seed for that is that we introduce an unintelligent factor into a field of intelligent activity. And what would that be? Well, if we start to worry. Worry is an unintelligent factor. Worry is a problem prayer. 
and you don't introduce something unintelligent into an intelligent system. Fear is an unintelligent factor. Hate, resentment, anything like that, blame. We have assumed that they are normal and necessary things. But just because everybody else experiences them doesn't mean that you have to. After all, do you want everybody else's experience? No, you want your own. Your own unique experience of God expressing by means of you. You know, all the sadness in the world cannot, cannot disprove joy. Joy is a spiritual truth. Joy is a quality of God. Joy is what God's love feels like. So health, joy, abundance, love, self-expression, you know, are the normal modes of living. The possibility of each of them already exists within each of us. You know, but you, you, know, you can't go on, we can't, none of us can go beyond our own self-accepted image, right? As long as you understand yourself, or I'm sure as long as you underestimate yourself, right, you cannot succeed in life as much as you possibly could. See, the thing is, if you say, oh, but you know, my past, I've made such mistakes, I've goofed up, I've made bad choices, blah, 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 on and on. You are not the past. You are the present, becoming the future. That's what we have to remember. None of us, we are not our past. The purpose the past serves is that we learn something from it, and it's not here now. That's the purpose of the past, that we have learned and it's not here. We are, right now, our consciousness is in this present moment, and because our consciousness is in this present moment, we are right now creating the future, right? So you are the potential of the infinite mind, and this mind knows only the now. Right? It doesn't keep records and, or, 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 uh, or sit in judgment of you in any way. You know? So think of this. If, if there is somebody we know, we know somebody, say, and, and this person is a concert pianist. Terrific. Okay. But one day they have a day off and they decide that they're going to go play golf. Well, wonderful. So people watching this person see him out on the golf course and they think, ah, he's a golfer. That's who he is. He's a golfer. He's all about golf. But people who know him know that he's really a pianist, right? So the fact that he's golfed one day doesn't refute the fact that he's a pianist, right? So I liken this to if we somehow make an error in our life. Not that I'm saying playing golf is an error. It's not, okay? <laughs> but, but just say that we make a mistake. That, making a mistake in our life does not negate the fact that we are intelligence in action, right? Every person alive has made mistakes. If you want to proceed with living, you can't spend all of your time licking your wounds, right? Looking at the past and, oh, I'm so afraid I'll make a mistake again. Because new ideas, new ideas will take you the next step of the way. And again, people come back again and again and say, oh, but I've had so many problems. God, life, never made a problem person, right? We just need to get that. It made a person who is capable, who has the creative ability, who has the inherent intelligence and divine wisdom within them to make them capable of handling problems, right? So the divine made a person who is capable of handling stuff. And you are the person, you and I, we are the person who sees the problem in order to activate the ideas in our mind necessary to solve that problem. Remember, ideas are what solve problems. The way God gives to us is God gives to us through the realm of ideas. It's not something outside of us that's going to fix our problem. Thinkers change the world. And you and I, we are the thinkers in our world. There's nothing to oppose you but your own subconscious patterns of, of defeat, of frustration, of limitation. Here, you see right now where each and every one of us, we probably have some excuses that we go to again and again, maybe even an alibi that we visit now and then. And if you, if you find these things for yourself, if you find an excuse that you go to regularly or an alibi that you have, those things are showing you a pattern in your subconscious mind that needs to be negated, healed, and released. Right? and replaced with an empowering spiritual truth. See, because God can only do for you what you are willing to do for yourself. You say, but I can't help it. This is just the way I am. Well, you are in the right place because I am here to say, 
wake up to the great fact of your life that you and you alone are responsible for your life. And you and you alone are responsible for changing your thinking that changes your life. Right? Problems hurt because they are not natural to who and what we are. And I believe, I believe they're unnecessary. Ernest Holmes says in his statement called What I Believe, he says, we believe in the ultimate emancipation of man from all discord. That means no, could you imagine no problems, no difficulty, no discord? So, so this to me says that's unnecessary. So when we know the truth and keep knowing it, we are set free from untruth. That's how it works. I cleave, I hold tight to the spiritual truth. I don't have to blame anyone, including me. That's a waste of energy. So I'm just gonna take that off the table completely. Blame, off the table. You know, Jesus was not interested in the past conditioning in the mind of the man <laughs> at the Pool of Bethesda. So the Pool of Bethesda are believed to be these healing waters, and there's been a man laying there on his mat for years and years, waiting to get in the pool. But he's got this huge story of all the reasons why he hasn't been healed in all these years. And what does Jesus say? Jesus just says, arise, take up your bed, and walk. And the incredible thing is, the man did. He did, right? And instantly, he was cleared of years of negative thinking, years of worry, years of defeat. I believe that we can do the same thing when we recognize I am the intelligence of God. Yeah, that's good. I am the intelligence of God. Would you say that with me now three times? I am the intelligence of God. I am the intelligence of God. I am the intelligence of God. See, it feels so good to speak the spiritual truth, doesn't it? It really does. Oh, my God. So all improvement depends on your seeing yourself as greater than you are, right? And what I mean by that is seeing yourself the way God sees you, not as limited or broken or not enough. You know, our potential gets stirred up and our creative capacities unfold when we see ourselves the way God sees us. You know, if it's a beautiful sunny day, like yes, wasn't yesterday a great, yesterday was just the most incredible day. It actually felt like fall in Southern California. God, I loved it. It was terrific. And so if you imagine a beautiful sunny day and you happen to be standing in the shadow. Now you can't blame the sun for the fact that you're standing in the shadow. So a problem in our life is like an obstruction in our thinking. We're just not letting in the life flow through us the way life really works. So divine intelligence, though, has never created a problem for any of its creations. So God never sent us a problem. If you think right now that God has somehow sent you a problem or that you need a particular problem because God needs you to have this difficulty so you can learn something, I want you to strike that right now. God doesn't send problems. That is not the God we have, okay? Divine intelligence never created a problem for any of its creations. So like the sun, God is always giving of itself completely, fully, and unaware of any misuse that we might make of it. So we have to shift our attention and focus from problem to the perfection of God within me, the perfection of God within me. And what this does is this steps us out of the shadow and into the sunlight. You know, and we think, well, is this too easy to work? Shouldn't it be really complicated to be powerful? This is a mistake we make in our modern world. We think things need to be very complicated, very advanced. You gotta have multiple PhDs to be able to do it really well. And I think, you know, what a surprise to learn that it is not true that the more highly educated the intellect, the fewer problems we shall have. I am here to tell you, I have spent, gosh, almost, well, not half anymore, but, well, a while back it was more than half my life in school. <laughs> and, and as much as I love that process, because I love school, um, it did not mean that I had any fewer problems. You know, really smart people can have just as many problems as anybody else, right? Because those problems, we would say, are not about intelligence. They are about consciousness. They are about understanding how the universe works, how things operate, right? So there's nothing wrong with life working really well 
you know, and there's nothing wrong with you having whatever it is you want as long as it doesn't infringe on somebody else's free will. But as long as you're think, but as long as you are thinking and feeling what you do not want, your mind will continue to create your own private self-accepted experience of hell on earth. Yeah, good times, good times, I tell you. I believe it is true that, that the half-hearted in any field don't accomplish very much. But those, who, if you are someone whose enthusiasm wanes soon, you know, what we do is that we just sort of get comfortable with our own complaints. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I'm the only one. But I have certainly done that, you know. So I think that no simple medicine cures all ills of the same disease, right? Only the people who are curable can be cured. Only the people who are healable can be healed. Only the people who know themselves as lovable can be loved, right? So we say, well, well, it's just a fact, you know, but because something is a fact doesn't make it a reality. That does not make it a spiritual truth. You're the only one who has to say, this has completed its course in my experience. I'm done with this. You know, I've received everything I need to learn from it, and it has completed its course. You can put, you, this, you know, in the Bible it talks about how you can't put new wine in old skins. And I think that's what this is. You know, that we can recognize my consciousness has evolved, and I can't put this new evolved consciousness that has an expanded awareness of the presence of God everywhere and within me, I can't fit that back into my old life you know, that, because that old life was just too small for the expanded consciousness that we are today. I think it's hard, if not impossible, to live um, a bigger, better life and hold on to the things that we've wanted to hold on to. I suspect, in some sense, we all have some little cherished experiences from the past that it, we just haven't let go of yet. That it was just, for whatever reason, I've just got a finger in there, just holding on to that one, you know? Take, so I would ask you today to do this with me now. Take one thing in your life that you would like to be completely solved, resolved, complete, done with. Now be sure, be sure, first of all, that this is something you want to be rid of. And so, not right now, but later you might say out loud to yourself, this has completed its course in my life. Yeah. You say it out loud, you know, I am now rid of this. I am now rid of this. And this cannot continue in my life. My decision is final and irrevocable. And then, mentally, with your mind's eye, picture yourself as no longer having that problem. Right? It's gone. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Now, get the feeling the problem is gone, and it shall never return. How does that feel? How does that feel? Like you're never going to have to deal with that again. Imagine yourself being able to talk about that, telling your best friend, oh, I never have to deal with that again. How does that feel? Oh, my God. And stay in that consciousness just for a moment with me. Stay in that consciousness. I never have to deal with that again. Now, for the rest of the day, do not pick it up again. Just for today. If you really miss it, you can have it back tomorrow. Okay? But for the rest of today, for the rest of today, I'm asking you to not pick it up again. Because if you do, you actually interfere with your own subconscious's process of eliminating it. Right? So you just catch yourself and just say, stop. No, nope, I've completed with that. That no longer exists in my world. And before you go to sleep tonight, you just simply say, thank you, God, that this has disappeared from my experience. Thank you, God, for perfect healing, for loving relationships, for creative expression, whatever. But remember, there is one basic mental law. What you place in your subconscious mind must appear as your experience. And so what we're trying to do is that we're trying to massage our way into the subconscious, right? Because, you know, beating yourself up has not worked, right? I mean, if we tell the truth about it, how much have we beat ourselves up over the years? Plenty. Oh, my God, if I beat myself up, that'll force me to do better. It has not worked. That has not been a successful strategy for most people. So let's try something else. You know, you can think and feel negatively over a period of time, 
and have positive situations maintained in your experience because the, the larger tendency, and this is what Ernest talks about in our textbook. He says it's the general tendency of your thinking that manifests. So Jesus said you can't gather figs from the thistles, and Paul refers to it as sowing and reaping. So you are greater than you think you are. This is not, um, oh, you fabulous human being. This is, oh, you divine spiritual being. You are greater than you think you are, and you hold the key to a better life in your mind right now. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward for a moment. Oh, thank you. And just recognize that right here, the place we're on, we stand is holy ground. That we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. A spirit of life and joy and intelligence and creativity. This spirit within us is the most true, most real thing about us. We are emanations of the most high God. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, I further know that each and every one of us, we are connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And in this awareness of our connection, I speak the word for each and every one of us. And we recognize that the principal power and presence is within us. That God, Spirit, has endowed us with a power to create and evolve and grow and heal our life that has no limit whatsoever. And we embrace this now, knowing that we are a center of divine intelligence operating intelligently in this universe. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye, and we surround them with a mantle of God's peace and love and healing. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So everything that's pulled at our attention this week in our world, we allow an energy of light and love and healing to emanate from our consciousness to touch every situation in the world. We add light, we add love, we add positivity and good vibes to all of it. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together today that there is a healing that's happening for each and every one of us, and we say yes to it. So it is with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Grand. So, Tina Meeks Music is on, available on iTunes for any of you who would like that kind of inspiration the rest of your life. And um, we bless our offerings. There are many ways to make donations. One is to call the office at 818-762-756. I can read this better with my glasses on. There we go, 7566. Or you can go to nhcrs.org slash give. Text the word give to 818-457-3419. Shop Amazon Smile and check select our church. You'll find us under Church of Religious Science, North Hollywood. As a charity of your choice, 
This benefits the church, and it is no cost to you whatsoever. What a great way to give. A prayer with a practitioner is available after the service in person or on Zoom. I'm a Zoom person. Email prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or put a request in the prayer box for those of you who are here. Call in a prayer request to the church office. That number I gave you a minute ago. Option four. We pray around here, so take advantage of it. Oh, how are my Yoda ears here? Oh, okay. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sydney. Oh, isn't she the best? I've been watching her on Facebook and Zoom. Oh, she rocks it. So her talk on October 13th is You Are Already Enough. And that starts at 6.50 with a meditation, and the service starts at 7. Be there, or be square. <laughs> youth church is open. We welcome youth of all ages to church for our 9.45 service. Grief support on groom, oh, on groom, excuse me, Zoom. This group is facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, and it meets today on Zoom at 1 p.m. Circle of Healing, Sunday, October 17th at 11 a.m. in this sanctuary, right here. Join practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart for this very special healing journey. She will gently guide you via your chakras in a loving healing experience. Ooh. Be there or be square. Practitioner Sabrina Johnson will facilitate a three free meditation event honoring veterans and frontline workers. The, these meditation events will take place on three Sundays, October 31st, November 7th, and November 14th at 11.30 a.m. in the sanctuary. More information is available on our website along with Sabrina's contact email if you'd like to volunteer. Please pray, my son's a paramedic. Thank you. We're looking for people to help host our services on Facebook Live. Zoom too, I'm a Zoom person. Any of you done Zoom? Nobody's done Zoom? Zoom is cool. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom goes the service. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom do I, I gotta stay, stick to the script. Anyway, we're looking for people to help on Facebook and Zoom. It's fun, we have a good time. I wear hats on Zoom. I'll be back on Zoom next Sunday. Our bookstore is open for 30 minutes after service every Sunday. Please stop by and shop our selection of inspirational books, cards, jewelry, artwork, and unique gifts. Christmas is coming. The Zoom virtual patio, my favorite place to chit chat, is available before and after service on Sundays and Wednesdays. The Zoom meditation happens every morning, Monday through Saturday, not Sunday, at 8 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links. Did I mention Zoom? Probably. And more information about all our events and sign up for a weekly e-blast and monthly newsletter. That's everything that's fit to print. So now, I guess we're going to sing. Let's all stand and sing the peace song.
please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Oh.